I'm trying to build a PCB tile-based board game. And in part one of this video series, I built this prototype. I decided that magnetic connectors are the best way to get this to work. But this is not the full board game yet. I need to add more patterns and program a whole bunch of tiles. My name is Zach and I'm the Bite-Sized Engineer. In this video, let's see if we can take this project across the finish line. Let's start by taking a look at this prototype. There are a few things that I do need to change and I mentioned them in part one. The first thing is the silk screen. I think it needs to go to the edge of the board just making those paths a little bit more clear. The second thing I wanna change is the hole size for these magnetic connectors. They have too much wiggle room. As you can see, when I soldered these to the board, it introduced a little bit too much of a gap around the edges of the board. I wanna clean that up by making the holes smaller so that there's no wiggle room and everything fits together tightly. The third thing I wanna change is the type of LED that I used on these boards. Do you Remember in the macro pad project, I used these reverse mountable RGB LEDs. That's what I want to use on this project. The reason I'm making this switch is so that I can have all of the components soldered on one side of the board, and that way it'll make assembling these much easier. Here's what those changes look like on the PCB that we've already made. The silk screen is thicker and it goes to the edge of the board, which is going to make those pathways a lot easier to see. I've also gone ahead and I used the reverse mount LEDs on this design. Now we need to move forward and figure out all the different types of patterns we can create using three different paths. I've spent a lot of time thinking about this and I think that I've got a good way to go about it. So a path needs to start on one of the edges like this and it can really only go three places. It can go to an adjacent edge, it can skip that and go to the next edge or it can go to an opposite edge. The remaining two edges are just another skip and another adjacent, so we don't need to enumerate those. So basically, we have three different paths. We can do an adjacent, a skip, or an opposite. So now we need to figure out all the different permutations of adjacent, skip, and opposite without running into repeat combinations. So let's get some graph paper and start drawing some paths. So I'm just gonna recreate this one first. We've got adjacent, then we've got opposite, and then we've got another adjacent. I think we could do adjacent, adjacent, and adjacent. That's another permutation. What if we did adjacent, skip, and then the only thing left to do is skip, okay? Let's do opposite, opposite, opposite. Okay, how about, what if we did opposite, skip, and skip. We don't have that yet. I'm struggling to come up with anything beyond this because everything I come up with is just a combination of what I've already done. But just to make sure that I haven't forgotten anything, I went ahead and I created a spreadsheet. Of course, because I'm an engineer, right? I always have to do a spreadsheet. So I've gone through all the different permutations and the rows that are marked in green are the tiles that I came up with here. The rows that are marked in red are just combinations of existing tiles, and the rows that are marked in gray are actually just not possible to make with the three paths. So this spreadsheet just confirms that I've come up with the five patterns that are possible to make with three paths on a hexagon. With that information, my team and I have spent an enormous amount of time creating all five of these as separate PCB designs. So here's what they all look like. First, we've got adjacent, adjacent, adjacent. We've got our adjacent, opposite, adjacent. This is opposite, opposite, opposite. Here we have opposite, skip, skip. And then we've got adjacent, skip, skip. Now we need to order all of these PCBs and the parts to assemble them. Once the boards and the parts all get here, I can start assembling all of these using the solder reflow oven that I built in a previous video.
I'm almost done assembling these boards. I started out by applying solder paste and then I populated all the components and then I ran them through the reflow oven. The last step is to add these magnetic connectors that allow each of the tiles to snap together. The problem is I actually don't have enough of these connectors so I need to steal the connectors that I used on my prototype board. And to remove connectors like this, I just got a new tool that I ordered from DigiKey. It's the Hakko FR301 desoldering tool. This is a desoldering vacuum that heats up your solder joints and then when you pull the trigger, it uses a vacuum to suck out all of the solder. So let's go ahead and use this new tool to pull off these connectors. Do you see how easy that is? If I didn't have that tool, I would have to probably get two irons and melt all of those joints simultaneously before trying to pull it out. But this tool makes this task a lot easier. At the beginning, I talked about reducing the size of the through holes for these magnetic connectors. Now, as I put these connectors in and solder them to the board, there's no wiggle room and they all go in at the exact orientation they're supposed to. We're in the home stretch here. We're ready to start programming these boards and I've spent a lot of time writing some code in the Arduino environment. I spent a lot of time figuring out how I was gonna approach this project from a programming standpoint. So there are five different boards with different patterns on them and each of them have a microcontroller. So initially, I figured I would just make five different versions of the firmware loaded onto each of the boards. But I figured that if I needed to make any changes, that would get really messy and really hard to maintain. So I spent a little bit of extra time at the beginning figuring out how to make a unified code base that I could load onto each of the five different types of boards. I ended up utilizing structures quite a bit in this firmware. So I have a tile structure that's kind of my overall architecture. And within the tile structure, I have a path structure for all three paths on each board and a connector structure. So that allows me to assign all of the GPIO pins that correspond to each of the paths on all five different patterns. I utilized a lot of preprocessor directives in my code and I can select which type of tile it is at the beginning and only the right code will compile for each tile. Basically, that's a complicated way of saying that I can just comment or uncomment a line at the beginning of my code and it will put all of the right firmware on each board. If you wanna dive in and take a closer look at my code, you're welcome to do that. All of this will be available on a GitHub repo. I assembled four of each of these patterns, so I have 20 boards total that I need to program. So all I need to do is connect the UPDI programmer that I used in the last video. I have a little exposed pad here on the edge of the board that I'm connecting a J hook to, and that's the UPDI signal that is gonna program the microcontroller. So in my code, I need to make sure that I have the right line uncommented. So the board I'm holding in my hands is an AAA board. That means adjacent, adjacent, adjacent. So I need to comment out this line and uncomment the AAA line. So that is going to put all of the right pin assignments to this board. And then I can upload that. Reading device ID, writing, and it's done. That's all there is to it. So now this board has been programmed and now I can do all the rest of the 19 boards that I assembled. I just finished programming all 20 of these boards and I'm getting really excited to start playing this game, except I think it's missing one final thing. The bottom of these circuit boards have all of the components showing and I don't think that looks good for a finished game. So what I need to do is to design and 3D print a bottom cover that will kind of hide all of these components. So let me head over to the computer and show you what I've come up with. I started by importing the PCB into Fusion. Then I created a sketch and I extruded that to fill all of the negative space. But there's a problem with this 3D printed piece. I need this piece to stay connected to each tile as we're playing the game. And if you notice, I didn't add any mounting holes for me to screw something into. So I needed to come up with something a little more clever. So I started thinking about ways that I could snap on to these magnetic connectors. That's when I noticed that these magnetic connectors have a specific profile. They're kind of rounded on the front face and that provides just enough surface area underneath the connector for a 3D printed part to snap onto. So I think I have an idea to utilize that space underneath the connector. I'm gonna create a feature on my 3D print that sort of grabs and hugs that underside of the connector and I'll extrude it out to look like this. So let's print a couple of those out to see if they work. These have just come off the 3D printer and I need to test them to see if they're gonna work. I'm hoping this little feature here will grab onto the underside of the connector as I snap it into place. Oh my gosh, that's so satisfying. 
That works perfect. I got the clearance just right, so there's no wiggle room here, and I'm ready to print out a bunch more of these and snap them on to all of the tiles. The thing I really like about this 3D printed piece is that it adds a lot of polish to this game. I didn't want to see all of those components on the bottom, and having this piece on the bottom really buttons it up. Last one. We're done snapping on all the bottom pieces, and these look so good. I had considered for a minute uh, putting a top layer on there that would diffuse the LEDs, and I even printed out a couple of test pieces, but honestly, as I tested them out, they didn't really add much to the overall value of the game, so I'm gonna leave them out for now. With that being said, it's time to dive in and start playing this game. This is a multiplayer game, and I'm not gonna try to demonstrate it by myself, so I'm gonna ask Pat, the cameraman, to join me for this game. All right, so this game I'm calling Pixel Path. So the goal of the game is to have the longest complete path, mm -hmm. okay? So we're gonna take turns, and we're gonna draw tiles from the stack. We kind of shuffled these beforehand. On your turn, you draw a tile, and you have to add to your path. You have to extend okay. your path. Your path has two ends, right? So you can extend it on either end. As long as you're building your path, that's your move. So you can't play on my path and try to block me or whatever. It might interact with my path, mm -hmm. but as long as you're extending one side of your path, it's a legal move. And I will mention this, obviously, this is the first time that anybody in the history of the world is playing this game. It hasn't been play tested or anything like that. So we're kind of figuring this out and making it up as we go. We're gonna take turns extend our paths, and we try to complete our path before we run out of tiles. So okay. there's a little bit of strategy here. You probably don't want to wait until the very end to try to connect your path together because you may not have the right tile mm -hmm. to do so. All right, so do you want to do like rock, paper, scissors, whoever goes first? Sure. All right, rock, paper, scissors, shoot. Okay, I go first. I'm going to draw this tile, and I've got to extend the red path. I'm going to do this. Okay, do you see how they light up? It extends. All right, you, your turn. I love it. Oh, you got the same one. Did we shuffle these? I did. Okay. I, I thought I did anyways. So I'm going to go, and I've got to take this tile, and I'm going to extend it. I want to kind of go, oh, this is going to extend both sides simultaneously. Ooh, Ooh fancy. Okay. Very fancy. Yeah, you're, you're also going to extend. Oh, you crossed your own path. Ooh, should I should I extend yours too? Do I want to do that? Mmm. Strategy. <laughs> oh, so that if I did that, we would collide, uh, and the game would end now. Right. So we don't want to collide our paths. So I can't do that one. I think I'm just gonna go straight. I think I'm gonna go away from you. Mm. Oh, you pulled the same tile. <laughs> okay. What if I do, I'm gonna do this. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, I extended yours while also extending mine. Ooh, oh no, don't do that. I don't want, I don't want to go away from, so maybe that's good strategy for you. Okay. Oh, you just sent me way off there. Oh crap. What am I gonna do here? Oh no. I love how. Complicated. It's, uh, it's simple uh, but complicated. It's unpredictable. Like I had no way. I can't plan for you doing that. I'm gonna try to steer it back. I'm gonna try to steer it back. Okay, ready? <laughs> I, I don't have high hopes here. Oh my goodness. Okay, here it goes. Go around the loop, <laughs> back on itself. You've crossed yourself twice. If you yeah, get one I... of those adjacent patterns, you could complete it, and that would be like, that would be a lot of tiles. I, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not seeing. Uh, I'm not seeing a path to victory for myself here. Well, unless here. you can somehow. Can I mess you up? Yeah. I don't want to do that. I'm not liking my options here. Okay. Oh yeah, that was not good for you. You were hoping for. Uh, yeah. You were hoping for an adjacent piece. These only go in a certain way because of the connectors. I think I only have. I only have bad options. <laughs> okay. I am worried about this. Okay, I'm going to, I don't know if I can do this. Okay, I guess we're gonna do that. I don't know. Yeah, that creates an adjacent, right? 
creates an adjacent opportunity. We're running out of tiles. I don't know if either of us are gonna complete this. Okay, I'm taking the last piece. Yep. Can fun. I do it? Oh no. That would be it does cool. not no, it doesn't have an opposite. Out of the way. Okay. <laughs> I ended at, the, at your piece. Well, I think that's a draw then, right? Neither of us. That was a good game. Neither of us won. It's a lot of fun. So that was the first time we played through this and clearly there are some things that we could improve. That was an interesting first game, but let me show you what it would look like if one of us had completed our paths. To demonstrate that, I'm gonna remove the last tile that I played and I'm gonna add it to the blue path and actually complete it. You can see that the blue LEDs start flashing. That's the game telling us that the path is complete and that the player no longer needs to add any more tiles. Another scenario that I didn't cover is when two paths collide. So let's see if we can create that scenario. So I'm gonna intentionally cause a collision here by connecting this tile in here. And you can see that the colors alternate between blue and red. That means there's a collision and that gameplay has to stop there. I think in this scenario, it makes sense that the players would just draw. It would be another tie. So I need to come clean and I need to address the elephant in the room. You're probably wondering how I'm powering all these tiles. When I started this project, I had ambitions to power this thing using like a really thin LiPo battery or maybe even using wireless power transmission, but I kind of cheated a little bit. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So this is the starting tile and I actually soldered a couple of wires on the bottom there and I already had a hole that went through my workbench and I'm just powering this using a benchtop power supply that is underneath my workbench. I felt like I needed to come clean and that there was a little bit of movie magic happening here, but in the future I would love to try to figure out a nice clean way to power this game so that you could play it on a tabletop like this. This was our first time playing this game and it was really fun. I wanna keep trying to develop this game a little bit further. I think there could be some additional game mechanics. So if you have some ideas on how I could improve this or things that you would do differently, let me know about it down in the comments. My name is Zach and I'm the Bite Size Engineer. Thanks so much for watching.